This morning I'm pruning these black currant bushes. Now back in the summer when these bushes were in full production, I made a film about them, but somehow it never made it to completion. So as I prune these, what I'm going to do is let you have a look at that film I made back in the summer. I think you may enjoy it. Today I'm picking my black currant crop. They've just reached the peak of their ripeness and are ready for picking and to be put to use. Now black currants are really fiddly to pick and I've really not found any easy way to do it but I personally think that they make the most fantastic and tasty jam in the world so I really do take the time to actually grow black currants which is quite easy to grow and I'll explain that in a moment and to pick them and to make some jam from them. And it's the primary purpose we put them to though we do eat a few fresh. Black currant little things that they are are packed with vitamin C and other antioxidants totally full of nutrition so really really great. Now growing black currants as you see these are thriving is really quite easy if you're in a cooler climate and where you have a little bit of moisture you need a bit of moisture. Now in this position beside my greenhouse they get the runoff from the greenhouse they also get the excess water from when I'm watering in the greenhouse I drain that into here to water them so I don't actually have to give them any special watering they also do get the afternoon shade so while they will handle full sun that little bit of extra shade probably helps in keeping them more moist pruning is a simple thing in autumn it's a simply a matter of coming back and taking out some of the older wood and making space for the new canes to grow now as I said the main thing I'm doing here today is taking out some of the old wood and you'll tell that by the fact that it is darker than the new growth which is a lighter colour. That way you create more space for new growth and also I'm, I'm thinning it out basically so that it opens up because these are too bushy. There is come in and take out a piece like that where it's way too thick you need to be able to get some airflow through it to get some light through it they become really entangled wow that out and I also do come through and just cut the tips a little bit I find that that they just get too lanky and by bringing them down a little bit stops them falling over. Yes there is an advantage against being here because of the moisture but also there's negatives because the roots from these go into the beds in the greenhouse and take some of the moisture and nutrition from those beds. Also it's quite difficult to pick on this side so ultimately I would be better to have these somewhere else if I could locate another damper place. These prunings can be turned into new plants really easy. Simply take a, a good piece, uh, a piece like that is probably excellent, trim off any little bits and simply put that fairly deep into the ground somewhere moist probably this time of the year I would put it in now which is early winter or late autumn put it in and leave it there make sure that it stays moist in the spring as well and it will root up and grow they are really easy two of the four bushes that I have here I developed by simply putting the cuttings in and that's what I would use if I want to move these or multiply them is simply take cuttings, put them in and away they go. It only takes a couple of years then and they're into production. But I'm going to work on this process of picking these which is going to take me a while because they are fiddly. And then we'll go into the kitchen and I'll show you how I make jam from these without loading it up with sugar. Choosing the right time 
to pick these berries is important. They need to be at their maximum ripeness, so they need to actually taste sweet when you taste them, so you want to see them swell up nicely. But you also need to come in and pick before they start to fall in any serious way. But you'll often see a few start to fall at that point of ripeness. And while they hang fairly well, you do need to move within a few days and pick them, otherwise you'll start to lose a lot more falling on the ground. If you pick them too early, they'll be tart, you've got to use way too much sweetening, and your jam won't be as tasty as it could be. So once you've picked the berries, the first thing that you're going to need to do is to separate out all this leaf that gets in, and also some of the stalk. You can tolerate a little bit of stalk in it when you're making jam, but this leaf, you don't want that in there. The way I do it is to put it in water and to mix it and allow it to float, and of course stripping the berries off the stalks. It is time consuming, but you have to do it to make this jam. Time of course is one of those things that is hard to value. Now if you were to compare the cost in terms of time to jam that you buy from the supermarket, this jam would be incredibly expensive. But not everything can be boiled down to dollars and cents. So putting time into good food is, I believe, is a really worthwhile expenditure of your time. Once you've cleaned the berries to your satisfaction, you do need to weigh them because it's important to know the weight of fruit so that you can make uh, judgments in terms of the amount of sweetening to add to it. When beginning the cooking process, I don't add a lot of water, just sufficient to start to sweat them and produce their own liquid. I think water simply dilutes flavour. Of course you can blend black currants with other berries like blackberries or gooseberries to extend the flavour into a greater quantity if you're short of black currants. But we prefer the pure black currant because we have plenty of black currants and it'll make quite sufficient amount of jam for us. Once the berries start to cook up it's good to remember to give them a stir from time to time. Now at this stage still there will be an occasional bit of stalk that you're able to remove. Already I can smell the delicious smell of the black currants. In terms of sweetening it's traditional to use sugar of course and I have used this in the past. The traditional quantity is an equal amount of sugar to the amount of fruit in making jam, but to my palate this is way, way too sweet. So in the last couple of years I have made it with xylitol and I have found that I've been able to use approximately one third of the weight of xylitol to fruit. So that is three parts fruit, one part xylitol by weight. This year I'm experimenting further and I'm trying a xylitol stevia blend that I make myself and this theoretically is twice as sweet so I should be able to reduce it to six parts fruit one part sweetener. I have 5.3 kilos of fruit today that I'm using and so I'll be adding 900 grams of xylitol stevia mix to that and then tasting it and deciding whether it needs any more sweetener. The stevia mix that I'm making is made by mixing just one teaspoon of 97% stevia powder with six cups of xylitol and of course mixing it very well. It is claimed that the stevia concentrate is approximately 450 times sweeter than sugar. And it's so sweet that even when I have it open or mixing it like this, even though there's no noticeable stevia in the air or I haven't bought it near my mouth at all, I can actually taste the sweetness. So I'm weighing out 900 grams of this mix to add. 
it's always better to start with a lower amount or the lowest amount you think you might need and then add more by using the stevia and hopefully halving the amount of xylitol it has considerably reduced the cost of the sweetening because xylitol is quite expensive uh, even though stevia is quite expensive the small amount that you use is quite economical and really brings down the cost compared to just using xylitol on its own okay it just needs to cook for a little while now once the jam begins to simmer you can leave the lid off and let it evaporate a little bit to concentrate and also when it's cooked a little bit it's time to taste it and to see if it has the right sweetness so after allowing it to cool and tasting it I've decided it's not sweet enough and so I'm going to add some further sweetening I'm going to start with another 300 grams and then taste it again that'll bring the total to 1200 grams well after tasting it a second time it is close but I think to make it acceptable to the children it needs a little bit more sweetening I'm going another 200 grams which is probably a little daring so after tasting it for the third time I've decided that it is sweet enough the theory didn't actually quite work of it doubling the sweetness and halving the amount of xylitol that I needed to use so I ended up using 1400 grams of the xylitol stevia mix as I probably would have used at least 1800 grams of xylitol on its own on the last year's ratio of course each batch of fruit is going to be slightly different now that it is beginning to boil a little I am at the stage where I can begin thinking about how I'm thick going to thicken it I I'm going to thicken it with some agar. I use around one teaspoon of agar per kilo. That's including the fruit and the sweetener. So this will be around about seven teaspoons of agar that I'll use. And of course some water with it. You could of course use pectin as a thickener if you preferred. It's just your choice. I like the agar, I find it very easy and it works very effectively. After adding the agar it does need to boil for around about three minutes before you start bottling. So once it's ready put it in sterilized jars and when making this type of jam where you have low or no cane sugar it's good to make sure you have a, a good vacuum seal. and what you're bottling is uh, very hot at this stage it looks very runny but as it cools the agar will come into effect and thicken it up so now that I've finished the pruning and cleaned up around the base I'm spreading some blood and bone and also a little dolomite and then I'm mulching them with some newspaper and straw over the top and that'll keep the moisture in and they'll be set for the next season. So hopefully you enjoyed that. If you don't have any of these growing and you're in the right climate I highly recommend that you plant some and make some jam. We can now look forward to a new crop and hopefully another batch of jam in the summer. Yum!